It was a big weekend for local restaurants on Oahu. They were given the green light to reopen. And gyms, theaters, bars, and inter island travel without a quarantine are next to resume. Joining us now to talk more about it is Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell. Good morning to you, Mayor. Christine, good to see you. Good to see you. First of all, great haircut. I know the last time we spoke, you were going to get one looking good. Now, the right. next. The next big thing was the restaurants reopening this past weekend. What did you notice? You know, I actually went in, uh, to a restaurant in Kamuki, sat out on the sidewalk, and had dinner with my wife and daughter. And, you know, my wife's family had Tanoi Simon Stan and Wailai Avenue. She talked about Little Kid Days and the National Dollar Store and Thrifty Drugs, which was pre, -Cos uh, pre Cosasis ABC. It was the founding store. And for me, it was about returning to a life that was before, um, even before the pandemic. And so I'm hoping with opening restaurants and ha being able to dine on sidewalks and those kind of places, we can actually live life better than pre-pandemic. So I was happy to see restaurants opening. Not everyone has opened up. As you know, Christine, There's, I think they're waiting to see how it goes. And uh, some went early, some are going to go a little later. But at least the opportunity is there now for people to start to dine in restaurants and help create jobs again for our people. Yeah, I also called around some of the restaurants, Mayor. Most of them could give me a date as to when they would reopen, although at least one or two could not even give me a date as to when they could reopen. Is there any kind of guidance or help or resources for the restaurants and their owners who are kind of unsure how to still move forward and if they can move forward? One, if you go to our one Oahu, uh, .org website, you'll get guidance on what needs to be done in order to open a restaurant. Um, the other thing is you can also get a small business grant. As you know, we have up to $10,000 in grants being provided by four credit unions uh, using the city's CARES money to help restaurants modify. Now, it won't make a tremendous difference, perhaps, but it does help in terms of doing the types of modifications, plexiglass, temperature taking, those kind of things. And we really want to try to get more restaurants up and running. We want people to be reemployed again. The restaurant I went to on Saturday, they hired about 50% of their staff back. And these are people who hadn't been working for a couple months now. Now they're back rebuilding our economy. And we hope that continues to happen in the coming weeks. And we'll stand by to assist in any way we can, including through our economic recovery office, which we're going to be opening up on July 1st. Now, speaking of the coming weeks, gyms, theaters, bars, they will be set to reopen June 19th. What will that look like? Because we're talking about more customers, more people inside a facility. One thing for sure you're going to see um, so a physical distancing being practiced, you know, six feet apart. You go to a gym, you're not going to all be clustered around um, one piece of equipment. You're going to have to be spread apart. You're going to have to be very careful. Um, theaters and museums, same thing, spread apart, six feet, seating on all sides. A little bit like when you go to go to pray. Now you have to be spread apart and um, it's working. Uh, we see people practicing all of these things and it's incumbent on all of us to really follow the guidelines that are going to put in place to protect ourselves, our loved ones, our neighbors, our co-workers and that way we can continue to manage uh, this this COVID-19 pandemic that's still out there. It hasn't gone away and you've seen cases have increased a little bit on Oahu in the past couple of days. We can manage those cases if we all practice mask wearing, physical distancing, and then all the guidelines as these different things open up, Christine. Now, next week, the inter-island travel quarantine will be lifted. What will that look like? What do you anticipate and what do you want to tell travelers? Now, I'm, I'm, we're grateful that the governor is opening up the inter-island travel. And, you know, on Oahu, we were actually interested in doing it a little earlier if we could. We want to see our friends from our neighbor islands coming here, and obviously we want to go to our, go to the neighbor islands to see our friends. And um, it's the first step, Christine, to how you invite visitors back in from outside of Hawaii. How it's managed the airport, the choke points as people come in having to fill out forms, uh, temperature taking, those kind of things, are the tests that we need to go through and to make sure it's up and running properly and smoothly before we open up to you know, you could have 30,000 visitors coming back in. That won't happen. You know, in the long run, it may happen. It may never happen again. Maybe there'll be a new type of visitor industry that we come out of. But we know for sure that Choke Point is the airport's 
and we know that the airport's working very hard uh, to get their forms digitized so a lot of it can be done online a lot quicker and then we see hot works on june 16th rolling it out over the rest of june and hopefully the kinks will be worked out and then we can start looking at inviting people back from outside of hawaii and how do you think that will look what do you support in terms of a timeline and a process when we do start inviting people from outside the state to come here I think there's a couple more things, Christine, that have to be done here. As, as you've heard, Department of Health talking about contact tracing. We're passionate here in the city and county of Honolulu about testing, contact tracing, isolation, and then support services provided if someone is actually having to be quarantined. And we have about 30, according to Department of Health, about 30 contact tracers on Oahu right now. We really need a lot more if we're going to bring visitors in. They're working to get a contract in place. I think it's in place now working with the University of Hawaii to build up a team of about 300 contact tracers that I think need to be in place before we invite visitors in. Because as people travel, the virus travels, we know most of the cases brought to Oahu came from travel-related uh, people who came into Oahu. And so we need that in place first and foremost. Once that in place, I think, this is me talking now, I think there has to be some component of testing either before they arrive and test negative, maybe a test three days before and showing that they've been tested or upon arrival that they agree to be tested in a quarantine until the test comes back. Now, that's a little extreme, but I take that line as the line that we should stand on and then move back if necessary. This is really, really important, um, particularly in the early days because we know the pandemic is still strong on the continent. Places like New York, places like Los Angeles, um, they still have a large number of cases. These are two major markets for Hawaii. Want to make sure that before people come from the continent, they're not going to get the rest of us sick. Now, the other part, they talk about travel bubbles, right, Christine? Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Japan. But these countries have listed the United States as a level four country, not safe to come here. We're part of the United States, so people wanting to visit our, our state of Hawaii have to deal first with the issue that the federal, that their governments have put in place. Somehow we have to show that Hawaii is different than the rest of the continent, that we are the safest place to come in the country, that we have the lowest number of cases. And if we can do that, perhaps this travel bubble would be the first step to bring in people from other parts of the, of the world, particularly the four countries I listed, and maybe not with testing, because the number of cases there are just so darn low. All right, thank you so much, Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell, for joining us once again this morning.